My entire life, I've always struggled with severe depression, anxiety. Um, I was actually diagnosed around nine years ago with depression, anxiety, bipolar, OCD, and PTSD. And so it's a lot. <laughs> and um, so I always, always felt like very broken and that I was never going to feel better. Mainly it's the anxiety and the depression um, kind of came to the forefront. It just was overwhelming. Uh, I felt like I couldn't function as everyday life and working. Um, but really what made us call you was I started having, um, I think you call it suicide ideation, um, but just random thoughts of I'd be better off if I wasn't here. I just want it to end, things like that. Um, so that was the only time in my life that I ever had like really serious thoughts about it. And nothing even was bad in my life. It was just in my brain, you know, the to even do like normal, regular things. Um, like if I was going to a party or going over to a dinner, like friend's house or something, I'd have so many anxious, like cycling thoughts, like all these possibilities of what if, what if I did this or what if happened? Like just subtly things that didn't really matter in the large scheme of things, but I would obsess over them. If you had a computer and all of your, um, little files like the window tabs were open i had like 50 open and i would just be bouncing to them constantly all over again and there was never any sense of like being able to focus on one task and get something done because even if i was on this tab yeah. my mind is thinking about all the other tabs and jumping to them constantly mm -hmm. and it was just exhausting it feels like if you scribbled like a gray crayon on a piece of paper and it just was constantly scribbling yeah. that's like how i felt my whole life like this like constant anxiety feeling mm -hmm. Um, but just little things I would have to do, like I just, for years, even in, and before I was diagnosed in junior high, elementary school, I would wake up at the exact same time every single night and I'd have to go and check every single bedroom, all the lights are off. And I was terrified that there was someone in the house, which if there was someone in the house, I wouldn't be smart to go look, but, um, I would look and I have to check every single window, every single door, make sure it's locked. And that was the only way I could go back to sleep. And I did it for years. And... I remember telling my parents and they're like, you do it every night. I'm like, yeah, yeah every night. Yeah. Um, so that's an OCD thing. Yeah. Definitely. Um, or just having like these fears that don't really like being afraid that someone's going to get in a car accident or something and feeling like, Oh, I have to do a certain thing or say a certain thing in order for that not to happen. Right. Like you have no control over yeah. that, but yeah. you feel like you have it or, yeah. you know, but you obsess over little things. That's the obsessive compulsive thing. Right. I did have panic attacks quite often. And whenever I had panic attacks, they would either end in me passing out or throwing up. I would drive, pull over to the side of the road sometimes and make sure that I'm not yeah. passing out or like, and I have thrown up on the side of the road. So Going like on my way to work before because I was so anxious about the fact that I had to go to work. Mm -hmm. Things that I used to, places I used to go every day, I now had some kind of connection with it. So I would panic, I'd have panic attacks if I was in that general you know, location. So I would, if I had to drive somewhere and drive past it, sometimes I would drive completely out of my way just so I wouldn't have to be in that area. So it's more like triggers yep. is yep. what, and I thought it was, I'm like, I'm not a veteran, right. nothing that traumatic happened to me um, in order to have this. But when my doctor at the time had said it was PTSD, I thought, I was like, this can't be right. But then I don't know if you'll see these things or, but um, when you did the brain mapping, all the five things were lit up that I actually had it. And I was like, oh, the doctor was right. Good job. <laughs> okay. So for example, I went and did a picnic in the park. It's COVID right now. If you're watching this later, it's not fun. Um, but we did a picnic in the park for my friend's birthday and I had no anxiety about going out or spending time with them. And um, before I think I would dread the idea of even just like leaving my bed or getting out of the house. And this was fun. I actually had the stuff doing Friday, I did stuff Saturday, I did stuff Sunday, and I didn't have the exhaustion that I used to have. I, so now I could have maybe 20 different tabs open of things that I have to do, like to-do lists and grocery shopping and whatever, but I can focus on one thing at a time. It feels, I feel very calm, very normal, very healthy. So that's a big difference. Okay. I didn't realize that I could feel this way or I could feel healthy and normal. Like I thought that like my anxiety levels is about here and this was my normal functioning all the time. So it would dip or it would get like, you know, worse. 
um, different times for anxiety, but this was still kind of my normal. So the fact that I'm now here with anxiety and this is my normal every day and it's just non-existent is amazing. I didn't think that I really could. I haven't had any panic attacks since we ended. Um, I have felt anxious on three different occasions and they were very fleeting moments. It's like I heard news and it made me anxious and then I was able to calm myself down. Like it was just very quick and I haven't felt depressed once since we ended. And it feels so foreign that I would even ever thought that because it's not, I thought it was foreign at the time, but now it's even so far removed. So yeah. My business is very busy right now and I don't feel as like overwhelmed or anxious. I'm able to handle everything and I've actually been able to take on a lot more work. Um, I started my business about uh, like a year and a half ago and it's picking up a lot. So Excellent. I've been able to focus on that. Excellent. Yeah, my friend Heather, was. she cried. She was so happy for me. <laughs> she was just like, you are so, she's like, this is, she's like, for everyone else that 2020 sucks so much. She's like, this was your year. Like you've, done, you've been doing so well. Um, so that was really nice to have something positive come out of all of 2020. But yeah, so she's noticed a difference. And me even explaining it and talking about it has been fun. I've been telling everyone, anyone that would possibly, if they even mentioned they're feeling kind of I'm like, you should try. The idea was scary to me. Something, when they explained it, like, oh, a coil and it's zapping your brain and like all these things. But it wasn't scary. You barely feel it. You get to watch Netflix the whole time. So that was fun. Um, or Amazon Prime or Hulu. You have lots of options. And yeah, you just sit in a chair. You put a cap on you. And according to like your MRI and different things that they do, um, they just put it in the right placement. And it's like a, just a zap, but it's, I don't know. I mean, zap is the right word, I guess, but it's just, it's very subtle. You do feel it, but it doesn't hurt at all. And your brain gets like used, or your brain, your um, skull like, gets used to it. So it gets even, it's you're not very sensitive. Um, one before, one in the middle of treatment, and then one at the end. And that was very helpful for me because you hear, like you say, oh, I have anxiety, I have depression. And actually being able to see like your brain waves or I'm not, I don't know all the de <laughs> details, um, but seeing like, oh, in this red spot, this causes depression and this one in the inner, in the middle, it's PTSD. In this one, it's usually, you know, um, anxiety. So seeing those things light up um, on paper and seeing like, oh, these are like physiological reasons why I'm feeling the way I'm feeling made me feel not so crazy. Like I was like, oh, there's actual reason that, and it's fixable of why I'm feeling the way I'm feeling. I guess before TMS, it's hard to be motivated when you feel so empty all the time. So there's just that, just the fact that I'm not, you know, getting up and working out in the mornings like I used to and different things, or mainly it's the eating. Um, Cause I'd eat for comfort if I had a bad day or something. I would drive through Chick-fil-A or go somewhere that I shouldn't be really eating. Um, so now since TMS, I don't eat poorly anymore. I can actually go back to just eating like regular how I used to eat and I've lost like 17 pounds. So, oh, oh pain too. That's the other thing. Um, I don't have any more back pain after doing the TMS stuff. So I did have a little bit, like not a little bit, I've had back pain since I was like in fifth grade. It's annoying, <laughs> I feel old. Um, and just constant pain. You had me walk up and down like your office yeah. and you were looking for, and you, were, you had said that there might be a benefit. Not that it's in your head, but your brain gets used to sending these like pain yeah. signals all the time. So even though there's nothing actually physically wrong with you, it's just used to sending that. Yeah. And with the TMS kind of like resetting, yeah. that might go away. And it completely did. I have like, Z I, have, wow. I don't have any back pain.